Hey guys, today we want to have a look at the Xiao Kai X9. It's powered by the MT6589 quad core processor from MediaTek with 1.2 GHz. It has a PowerVR SGX544 MP GPU. It comes with Android 4.2.1. There's 1 GB of RAM, 4 GB of ROM, of which you can use 1.6 GB. It has a 4.5 inch touchscreen with a resolution of 960 x 540 pixels. So it's not a regional display, but it's pretty good. It supports dual SIM one normal SIM card and one micro SIM card um, 3G and 2G networks it supports Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, GPS FM radio it has a 8 megapixel back camera and 5 megapixel front camera it has a gravity sensor, proximity sensor and light sensor And yeah, you with the phone you get a charger, a USB cable, a screen protector, a bumper, and if you order it in any color, you get the phone with the black back cover. And in this box, there is the color you ordered. I put the black co uh, back cover in there now because I installed my color back cover on the phone. I ordered it in green, as you can see. Yeah, it looks pretty nice. It's very light, 222 grams. So, it fits in every pocket, you can carry it around easily. So let's power it on. As you can see the screen is pretty good. Even if the resolution is low. If you go close to the screen you can see the pixels. Um, it is an IPS display so it does pretty good viewing angles as you can see. The picture stays great, no matter how we turn the phone around. Touch screen is also pretty responsive. All works nice, thanks to the low resolution. Really, really smooth. The Antutu score of the phone is... 13,889 That's a pretty good score for MT6589 powered phone Let's have a look at the hardware info and Here you see brand X9 240 dpi screen density dpi sorry so you see the memory size that is available for you to use it's 1.7 gigabyte so it's a pretty nice phone Yeah, um, unfortunately it has some software bugs, I can give you one example, let's go on the, oh no, i show you another one, it's easier, if you go on the settings, I have German language enabled now as you can see, and if you want to change the time zone of the phone with German language, you click time zone 
boom, it crashes. Now if I change the language to English for example, and then try it again, it works. Strange, true. Let's change back to German. And it crashes. So that's some weird software bug. Um, the email application, the standard email application of Android actually also crashes. As soon as, as you try to open an uh, email, it will crash, no matter what language is selected. So I tried it in Chinese, I tried it in English, I tried it in German, it always crashes as soon as you open an email. So you have to use a third party email application. I'm using Maildroid on it right now and this works. So it's a bit buggy operating system on here. I hope they will fix that pretty soon. It does support over the year updates so it shouldn't be that hard for them to fix that the phone is not out for a long time now so I'm pretty sure they will fix it within the near time so now um, well to show you some of the system performance let's do some gaming So it's actually really fun to play with this device. Um, now let's look at the camera quality. I've taken some pictures yesterday. Let me just find them. 
Here they are. Those are old ones. Damn. Where are they? Ah, oh, here we go. Um, as you can see, the quality is pretty good. It's doing sharp pictures. A lot of details. Scoring for images works also smooth. Mm. This picture is really good. It's Look at those details. It's a really good camera. It's not perfect, but really good for a phone. Especially in this price range. As you can see, it all works pretty, pretty nice. So, some internet browsing. I am now 50 meters away from the router. And I still have. Uh, two bars signal strength so let's test CNN let's go to the full side and the landscape view as you can see it loads up really fast the side scroll is smooth. Oh, let's switch this back to the mobile side again. I think I have to enable desktop mode. Let's try again. Boom, it's there. But again on the mobile mode. Okay. So, let's have a look at how text looks on a non retina display. Uh, again, I kind of zoom in the mobile side, so let's put this one. So as you can see, text is sharp. Of course, not as sharp as on a retina display, but it's easy on the eyes. You can read it perfectly, so it's not a problem. open up some YouTube video it also works pretty nice um, so open some HD video nature 1080p HD those are pretty good videos for demonstration purposes let's use this one I used it before So as you can see it works smooth, good picture quality and the internal speaker is also pretty good actually, so it's a great phone. Well let's come to the price of the device. The Xiaokai X9 is available starting at $160. So, it's almost nothing for what you get. Um, I would not have expected to get such a great phone for such a low price. The only downside of it are the software bugs, which are pretty annoying. But, well, I think they will fix it. And yeah, what I didn't say yet, um, the GPS quality is also pretty good. I went outside and had a GPS fix within like 5 seconds. It found 7 satellites 
and the accuracy was 3 meters so it's a pretty good GPS that's rare with China phones they often have problems with GPS reception especially the MediaTek based phones but this one works really really good perfect for navigation or tracking so if you are looking for a really cheap phone it has a good quality and still can do all the stuff you can imagine you should have a closer look at it okay thanks for watching hope you liked the video I have to apologize for sounding a bit tired I was up until 2 o'clock yesterday night and just got up at 7 a.m. now so I hope you don't mind that bye